Hey guys, it's Katherine. I'm back today with another tutorial that will get you on track to creating your very own digital planner. So yesterday we talked about how to create these spiral binding rings and today we're going to talk about how to create the cover of your digital planner. Now to make the cover, the very first thing that you're going to need is some kind of artwork or pattern. And if you plan on selling these digital planners, it will have to be artwork that you've created yourself. So you can create this artwork in several different ways. You can design something in Photoshop or Illustrator. You can create something in Procreate and use that as your cover. Or you can purchase from places like Creative Market or The Hungry JPEG several individual clip art elements that you can piece together in a software such as Photoshop or Illustrator and um, create a cover that way. So you can't use somebody else's artwork for planners that you plan to sell because it's illegal and it's unethical. So there are some websites such as Pexels that allow you to download images which you can alter. You would have to alter them in some way and you could use those as covers. You couldn't just use one of those just right out as a cover, but you could put maybe a quote over the top of some kind of pretty background or something and then that would be considered altered and then you could use that. So to get started, we need to make the cover our first slide in Keynote. This is because it needs to be the very first image that people see when they're looking at their planner and then when they import it into their app, it's going to look like the cover of their planner. So this is the slide that we created yesterday with the spiral rings. So in order to make a blank slide, my first slide, so I can create the cover, I'm just going to click on add slide and I'm going to click on blank and then I'm just going to drag that slide above the slide that we made yesterday and now this is my very first slide. So there's a few different things that you can do with digital planners. I've seen some where people create some kind of background that almost looks like the planner is sitting on a desk and then they have the planner on top of that. So I'm going to show you how to do that. And then I'm also going to show you how to use your spiral rings for your cover and also a way that you can make it look like your planner has a spine rather than a spiral binding. I'm going to show you all three of those methods. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make it look like it's sitting on some kind of desk or, you know, something like that. I'm going to pull an image from Pexels. Now, like I was saying, these images... If you want to use them commercially, you have to alter them. So this would be considered altered because this image that I'm going to pull in is just going to be my background. And then the planner is going to cover most of it. So I'm going to go to the Pexels website. And I'm just going to search for white wood. And let's see what they've got. I honestly think that first image is going to be the best image for me. Yep. Okay. Okay. This is really pretty, but this looks more like, I don't know, kind of like, I guess if it's a wooden plank desk, I don't know. Um, so I'm going to download that image really quick and it's going to save it to my downloads. So now I'm back on my canvas. I'm back in Keynote and I want to go over here to format and where it says background, I want to go to image fill. And it just pulled in that image automatically from my downloads. So, you know, if yours doesn't do that, you could just go to choose and then pull it from the folder that you saved it under. And there's a few different ways that you can fill the background. You can do original size and then you can scale that down if you want to. But, you know, if it's not the exact same size as the canvas, it's not going to fill the canvas size. You can do stretch, which is what I'm going to use. You can use tile and then scale that and it gives you a tile effect. So you can make that pretty big or pretty small. You can do, oh, I went to the wrong thing. You can do scale to fill or you can do scale to fit. So I'm just going to do stretch because I think that looks the best. And now I'm just going to build my planner on top of this. So the very first thing I need to do is I need to import a shape. So I'm going to go to my shapes and I'm going to select the rectangle and I'm just going to drag this rectangle. I'm going to make it pretty big. You can make your planner any size that you want. So if you wanted like a more traditional size notebook, 
you could make something kind of like this for your cover. But I like the landscape look. I like for my planners to take up as much of the screen as possible. So I'm going to give my planner more of a landscape look where it would be kind of a really long planner. Okay, so this would be the cover. So what I'm going to do to fill this with my artwork so I'm going to go over here to style and I'm again going to go to image fill and then I'm going to select the artwork that I made on procreate. So now it's just filled that shape with my artwork and there is my planner cover and I like how stretch looks. I can also go to scale to fill. I'm just going to use scale to fill. That's what I normally use for my planner covers and that is the start of my cover. So if I wanted to do the spiral rings, um, I would create the rings just like we did yesterday. Here's one, for example. And I'm just going to copy this by selecting Command C. It would be Control C on Windows. And then I'm going to go back to my first slide and click on Command V. And so since this is the cover, the rings would only be on one side. So I would place this here. And this is still grouped to be a spiral ring that's binding two pages together so I need to get rid of this other dot so I'm gonna ungroup it um, over here under a range and I'm gonna have to zoom in just a little bit to click on that dot and delete it there we go so now that dot's gone and now I can just um, group I'm going to lock this image and then I can group my rings together. Okay, so now I would just, just like yesterday, I would copy and paste these all the way down the planner. And that's what it would look like with spiral rings on the side. These gold rings aren't really showing up too well on that wooden background, but that's fine. And if it were me, if I was going to sell this, I would move and it would need to unlock this image and just move everything over to the side to make my planner cover even bigger. So if you want um, your cover to have some kind of shadow to make it look more 3D, you would just click on your shape and then go to style and select, you can go through these shadows. Here's the drop shadow, that's the one that I prefer. There's a contact shadow and then there's a curved shadow, but I prefer the drop shadow and that makes it look a little bit more 3D. So that's how you would do the spiral rings and how you would add a shadow to your cover. So now if you want it to look like it has a binding, like a spine instead of the spirals, you would do that like this. I don't want to delete this slide, so I'm going to lock it for just a second. Now I'm going to delete all these rings. Okay. So, to create a spine, I'm going to make this look more like a normal book. To create a spine, you would use your shapes. So, I'm going to go to my shapes, and I'm going to go to my rectangle, and then I'm going to try to get this as lined up as best as I can. Usually, Keynote will snap it into place, so it gets lined up pretty well onto my cover. Okay, so that's lined up really well. So now I'm going to fill this again with my cover image. I'm going to go to style. I'm going to go to image fill. And I'm going to select this artwork right here. And I'm going to go to scale to fill. You want to do the same method that you used to do your cover. And then I'm just going to give it a shadow. So I'm going to do the drop shadow again. And see how that gives it the effect of a spine because you know how spines kind of hang over the cover a little bit so I can zoom in a little bit so you guys can see see how it looks like a spine it's easier to see with solid colors than it is with patterns like this or the more simple the pattern is the easier it is to see but that does look like a spine right there so I know I've seen some covers as well that have what looks like a leather strap, um, not necessarily leather, but you know what I mean, over the edge. And you would do that in a similar fashion that you would creating that spine. You would just use your shapes 
and then place that where you would want to place it and then make it as thin or as thick as you want and then just change the color. Let's see, I'm going to make it gray and then you can give that a shadow too. The shadow just, you know, makes it look a little better, but that would be a cover with a binding that looks like a spine and then the leather um, strap or cloth strap or not cloth, but you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever that material is. And so that's how you do it. That's all it takes to create a cover. You can always, you know, if you want to leave a space for people to write right here, you would just again go to your shapes and then make that. If you wanted to give them kind of a rectangle space to write it, you could do that. And then we'll change that to white. And see. So that's all there is to it. It's really easy. It's just, you know, using a lot of shapes. Um, if you don't want the background, you could just go to no fill. And for some reason that changed it to black. But there it is, you know, on a white background. You could have a black background if you wanted to. And that's how you make it look like a notebook cover. So feel free to contact me if you have any questions. If you want to continue taking this course, make sure you are subscribed to my channel so you're alerted every time I upload new videos. And contact me on Facebook. Contact me on Etsy, Instagram. I'm very reachable. And you can also check out my website, naptimealt.com, where there's tons of planner-related freebies that you can download now.